Today, I have a phenomenal surprise for you. Actually, I did set you up earlier uh, this week and told you that Lars Strandritter would be coming on board. And here he is. Lars, how you been? <laughs> Good, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for having me on. What was your number one or number two takeaway from Investor Day? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think... The whole energy part of the side uh, of the show where they talked about how much less material and how much less energy we had to use to get to a sustainable future. I thought that was absolutely wonderful to see. And some of the the numbers they also showed of how more efficient electric vehicles is and less material uh, they use or resources they use line perfectly up with some of their T&E transport and uh, environment here in Europe that is an NGO that has done some a lot of great research uh, they're not always great at predicting the EV adoption <laughs> stuff like that but their research on on stuff is is uh, very good and what Tesla showed at uh, at the investor day kind of lined up pretty perfectly with the with their assumptions so that was like mm, it sounds sounds about right uh, so I was really kind of it was a very optimistic look at the future like people think we're going to need the same amount of energy to run a renewable um future but that is actually not maybe 60 percent uh, almost half the, the the cost right but i think uh the next generation platform even though we didn't get to see the car as many was disappointed in but i think this is just a really good showcase of <laughs> compared to it's just pretty much the opposite of what gm is doing right they they just showing you the end product the like, <laughs> look at this yeah we're gonna give you this one and this one and this one and they're not producing anything they're showing us how they're gonna get there how they're gonna do it and tesla showed the exact opposite they sold showed us the whole iceberg of of how they're gonna manufacture this thing but the thing that stands on top here they're not gonna show it before they are ready to produce it so but i thought the production that they're gonna cut in half and and be able to produce it at half the footprint and then they show a picture of the new giga factory in uh, in texas and that's apparently going to be bigger one of the biggest f factories in the world yes so well, if so it's that big but can produce anything on half the cost on half the footprint this is going to be an absolute monster and of course, labor cost in, in Texas is also cheaper than it is in the in, US. In, Me so. in, Mexico, in Mexico, yeah. In Mexico, yeah, not Texas, sorry. Uh, Mexico. So I think that will be a great place for swamping, you know, down in South America, starting a revolution down there with the EVs, <laughs> getting more up in Euro Europe and the US. So uh, because I think that factory should at least be able to produce 4 million or something like that. Oh, it's, I think I've, so. Maybe more I was that. blown away by the this, this size of that. And combined with that new EV platform, I was like, oh, man, this is Wall Street are not going to get this. <laughs> I know. I know. It just drives, <laughs> a, person, it drives a person crazy. It's that the stock was down <laughs> again. To, stock is down again today. Uh, you know, the Fed chairman came out and, you know, talked about interest rates going up even more. And so, of course, the whole market co collapsed and Tesla <laughs> collapsed. I guess that just gives us more opportunities to buy more, right? Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's going to come a time, there's going to come a time when the weighing will start as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the uh, speculating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, when that factory ramps up and shoot out this whatever kind of beast that are coming out of that factory, a little aggressive beast. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be, yeah. Yeah, so the timelines on that, the timelines on that left me all confused. So, so um, as you point out, I don't think it, it appeared from everything that we heard that the Generation 3 platform product will not start rolling off until the end of 24, early 25. So that's almost two years. That makes sense that, you know, you build a factory, then you got to put all the equipment in and then you got to get the equipment dialed in. And so, you know, that's a nice conservative, hopefully, estimate. Yeah. Um, but then 
now we hear that maybe they're going to build the factory in nine months and maybe it's going to break ground in April instead of May. And so they might be having a factory actually physically on the ground in February. And yeah. it's not going to take from February until the end of the year to make the first product. So you th and they also made a big deal about the fact that they would tell us at the groundbreaking what exactly they're going to make there. Yeah. So I like to take all those words, all those, you know, and I try to analyze them and put them all together. Are, is there going to be a different product that's going to be the first product out of uh, out of Mexico? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going <laughs> to, I think they that is the factory that's going to build the first next generation platform. Um, and I think they're going to be pronouncing that when they break ground and have a big ceremony i think they're going to show what this car might look like what what this factory is actually going to build because they can have that factory up and running within a year more yeah. or less if everything goes right right so yeah. that's not going to be too big of an osborne effect on everything if because that's kind of what they did with the model y and the model 3 and stuff like that uh they showed it off uh, a year before they right. actually started production of it right uh, and this is a kind of a new segment and they they probably gonna do <laughs> something that wall street doesn't get again and uh, probably gonna underplay it quite a bit like they did with the model y i don't know if you remember that reveal but that was like so underwhelming how they presented the cars like yeah this is this That's is the model really I, 70 percent like the model 3 yeah, I can see a lot more people, but that's it. <laughs> it was just like so underplayed. <laughs> like, yeah, so nobody believed Elon uh, when he said that he thought it would be the best selling car in the world because, like, yeah, it was so well underplayed and it didn't really do any Osborne effect on Tesla's sale that just continued to rise. And uh, I think Tesla has, has that down because I was like, but if they reveal it at the investor day, how are they not going to do an Osborn effect on that? So I was uh, really yeah. confused about that. And then, oh, yeah, of course, they're not going to show us anything. So I don't worry so much about the Osborne effect because, again, yes, there's a percentage of the population that will just wants a car that will get them from A to B. Yeah. But then there's a percentage of the population that wants a car that will get them from A to B, but they want it to be a little more prestigious. Yeah. So let's call that... Uh, you know, in, in the United States, that's somebody that's making $70,000 a year, 80,000, maybe a family income is 110,000. Uh, they got two, two people working, they make 110 and they're not going to, they're not going to buy a Corolla. They just yeah. aren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I don't care if it's a Tesla Corolla, <laughs> Yeah. they're still not going to buy it. Yeah. So they're going to say, no, I still want my model three or my model Y, or if I can somehow punch my uh, above my weight I'll get a used ass but yeah <laughs> but but it's but no I'm not going to go with that low end car because that's just not that's not me <laughs> yeah so, yeah so and it's sure. kind of you yeah. know contradicting uh, uh, the automotive analyst they kind of contradict themselves that the, we need more models but yeah. if you bring more models you're going to you have can. the Osborne effect and you're going to eat into your own sales like yeah, what do you want you can have both <laughs> so I actually think you're you're uh, right there that the people that are looking for the three and Y are probably not going to be looking too much at the next generation platform or the smaller one uh maybe more like the second car yeah 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 or the kids car yeah and also if you're going to be small if you're going to be this little small hat bag it's not going to be really compelling to to right. family guys like me i would not going to want it Right. maybe as the second car when my model 3 dies one day i would, I would take that as a, a second car so um yeah i think you're right on that one lars again lovely to have you here hey everybody uh, go to his channel sign up for his channel sign up for his patreons follow him on twitter do all that stuff i'll make sure all of that information is in the information below and um you know you can like this channel too if you kind of liked what we just did and uh, <laughs> Lars, see you again soon, we hope. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Randy. All right, great. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.